Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. I am very, very excited as today we will be going book shopping. So I've actually already been book shopping. I just didn't get a chance to film the intro, so I'm filming it now. But I ended up going to two different locations of Indigo, which is basically the Canadian version of Barnes & Noble, or I think Waterstones in the UK is kind of similar, but Indigo is what we have here in Canada as our main bookstore chain. And I also was in another town uh, about an hour away from where I live and visited a Christian bookstore. I will say from the three stores, I only ended up getting three books, which is fine, but I do have a lot of other books here that I have accumulated over the last couple of months. So it's a little come book shopping with me video and a book haul as well. For the book shopping, even though I only got three books from those stores, it's still about the experience. I love walking through Indigo, it is so therapeutic. But without further preamble, let's just cut to the B-roll and then we will go over the books that I got. Okay, so let's go over the books that I ended up getting. There are a total of 15 and I did get three, like I said, from the bookstores. And then a bunch of them I also got from Thrift Books, which is an online uh, thrift store for books. And then a few of them I also ordered online. So let's go over the ones that I got from the Christian bookstore and from Indigo. I do have one here that I got from Indigo and that is Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro. And this one I've been wanting to read for a very, very long time. It sounds 
so interesting, so unique and different and different from anything I've ever read before. And I've heard such praise for this author. And I just wasn't sure where to start. This one was actually on sale at Indigo. So I decided to pick it up and it sounds very, very interesting. It says, the sun always has ways to reach us. From her place in the store, Clara, an artificial friend with outstanding observational qualities, watches carefully the behavior of those who come in to browse and of those who pass in the street outside. She remains hopeful a customer will soon choose her, but when the possibility emerges that her circumstances may change forever, Clara is warned not to invest too much in the promises of humans. In Clara and the Sun, the author looks at our rapidly changing modern world through the eyes of an unforgettable narrator to explore a fundamental question, what does it mean to love? I think if I'm in the right mood, this will definitely be a hit and I've heard such praise for it. Please let me know if you've read it and what your thoughts were, but I am very, very eager to try this author. And then I got two books from that Christian bookstore that I visited. The first one here I've heard such praise for, and that is Of Love and Treason by Jamie Ogle. It is so, so intriguing. It says, Rome AD 270. In the wake of the emperor's marriage ban, rumors swirl that there is one man brave enough to perform wedding ceremonies in secret. A public notarius and leader of an underground church, Valentine believes the emperor's edict unjust and risks his own life for the sake of his convictions. But as his fame grows, so do fears for his safety. Iris, the daughter of a Roman jailer, believes regaining her sight will ease the mounting troubles at home. Her last hope rests in searching out Valentine and his church but the danger of associating with people labeled a threat to the empire is great. Still, as Iris's new friends lead her to faith in God, Iris is drawn to Valentine and they both begin to hope for a future together beyond the treacherous empire. But when a past debt and a staggering betrayal collide, Valentine, Iris, and everyone they love must fight for their lives and wrestle with trusting a God who can restore sight, yet does not always keep his followers from peril. That sounds so, so unique and interesting. And I do love ancient historical fiction. I'm very, very intrigued by this book and I'm really excited to read it. And then we also have The Lost Boys of Barlow Theatre by Jamie Jo Wright. She is an auto buy author for me. I want to read everything she writes. And this one is her newest release, I think. I'm not sure if there's another one that recently came out or is supposed to come out. Either way, this is one of her newer ones and it sounds really, really, really interesting. Jamie Jo Wright is very well known for writing dual timeline mysteries that feel very ghostly and um, like they could be paranormal, but they aren't. And I really love her writing and I love her atmosphere and all of that. So this one says, Barlow Theatre stole the life of Greta Mercy's eldest brother during its construction. Now, in 1915, the completed theatre appears every bit as deadly. When Greta's younger brother goes missing after breaking into the building, Greta engages the assistance of a local police officer to help her unveil the already ghostly secrets of the theatre. But when help comes from an unlikely source, Greta decides that to save her family, she must uncover the evil that haunts the theatre and put its threat to rest. Decades later, Kit, Boyd's best friend, vanishes during a ghost walk at the Barlow Theater, and old stories of mysterious disappearances and ghoulish happenings are revived. Then, television ghost hunting host and skeptic Evan Fisher joins Kit in the quest to identify the truth behind the theater's history. Kit reluctantly agrees to work with him in hopes of finding her missing friend. As the theater's curse unravels Kit's life, she's determined to put an end to the evil that has marked the theater and their hometown for the last century. Sounds very intriguing. Jamie Jo Wright is definitely an autobi author for me and I am very, very excited to read this one as well. This next book was actually a gift from a family member and I am just so, so grateful for it. And that is The Peasant King by Tessa Afshar. This one is a companion novel to, oh, I forget the title of the book. I believe the title is The Hidden Prince, but this is a companion novel. They're not a series, but it does follow after the events of The Hidden Prince, if that's the right title. The other book was set during the time of Daniel. I believe this one is as well, um, but it says, when her mother, the Persian king's famous senior scribe is kidnapped, Gemma and her sister must sneak undetected into enemy territory to rescue her. But infiltrating their adversaries' lands proves easier than escaping them. As they flee through dangerous mountain passes, their survival depends on the skills of a stranger they free from prison, a mysterious prince named Asher. Asher is not who the world believes he is. Despite his royal blood, he has had to climb his way out of poverty to forge success from nothing. A manufacturer of some of the best weaponry in the East, Asher has only one goal, to destroy his father. But following his escape from prison, Asher is irresistibly drawn to Gemma, unaware that she guards her own secret. Gemma must convince Asher to give up everything he has worked for, all for the sake of a higher purpose he's not sure he believes in. The fate of the Persian Empire, and possibly the Judean people, 
hangs in the balance and in the persuasive power of one ordinary woman. Tessa Afshar is wonderful. I love her books and of course I'm very excited to read this book. Jumping to a whole new genre, we have this collection by Brandon Sanderson. It is Arcanum Unbounded, the Cosmere collection. So it's really just a collection of short stories and novellas um, that you're meant to read as you're reading through his Cosmere books. So I know there are guides on what to read and when to read it after what books. And I have already read, what was it? I think the 11th Metal, which was Kelsier's origin stories. Kelsier is from the Mistborn Era 1 trilogy. And I loved that trilogy so much. But anyways, I am planning on reading all of Brandon Sanderson's Cosmere works eventually. <laughs> I've been going through them very, very slowly and I just always find myself intimidated before I start. But next up is Elantris and then I believe Warbreaker and whatever story from here is meant to be read alongside those. And then we will try to embark on tackling the Stormlight Archive, which I'm very excited for. But either way, that was a tangent. I'm very happy to own this book now. Another fantasy here, we have Ruthless Vows by Rebecca Ross. I'm obviously not going to read the summary just because it is the second book in the Divine Rivals duology, but I adored <laughs> Divine Rivals. I loved it so, so much and cannot wait to read this book, but at the same time, I'm kind of dreading it. I'm scared for one that it won't live up to how much I love Divine Rivals. I'm scared that I won't be ready for the emotional turmoil that I may experience while reading it. But we shall see. I really, really loved Divine Rivals. I think Rebecca Ross is such a talented author and it's definitely my type of YA fantasy. So I'm very excited to read this book. Very nervous at the same time. It's also so beautiful, but yes excited and nervous. Next we have A Portrait of Loyalty by Rosanna M. White. This is the third Codebreakers book. I did read the first two in February, I think, and I did discuss them in my February wrap-up. It was my December to February wrap-up. I loved the first two books so much, so I had to get this right away. As soon as I was on book two, I ordered this. I just, I need to read it very, very soon. You definitely should read these books in order, but the back of this shouldn't spoil the first two books just because the protagonists are different from each book. So this one says, Zivon Marin was one of Russia's top crypt cryptographers. I can't say that. Cryptographers. Until the October Revolution tore apart his world. Forced to flee to England after speaking out against Lenin, Zivon is driven by a growing anger and determined to offer his services to the Brits. But never far from his mind is his brother, whom Zivon fears died in the train crash that separated them. Lily Blackwell sees the world best through the lens of a camera and possesses unsurpassed skill when it comes to retouching and recreating photographs. With her father's connections in propaganda, she's recruited to the intelligence division even though her mother would disapprove if she ever found out. After Captain Blackwell invites Zivon to dinner one evening, a friendship blooms between him and Lily that soon takes over their hearts, but both have secrets they're unwilling to share, and neither is entirely sure they can trust each other. When Zivon's loyalties are called into question, proving him honest is about more than one couple's future dreams. It becomes a matter of ending the war. It is set during World War One, which is one of my favorite time periods to read from. And like I was saying, I loved the first two books. So I am definitely looking forward to reading this one. Then we have Dark Fire by CJ Sansom. This is the second book in the Shard Lake mystery series. And I recently read the first book and was very, very much surprised by how much I enjoyed it. I was very intimidated going in just because the series is set during the reign of Henry VIII. It is a Tudor era series and I don't remember reading any books set during the Tudor era. I know very little about it and I was very surprised at how accessible the first book was, how easy it was to follow. It is set during the Reformation era so there is a lot of religious themes and tension and everything surrounding the political changes that were occurring during that time. But anyways, the first book I really really enjoyed and I definitely want to continue the series and each book has a separate mystery going on where we have a main character named Matthew. He is a lawyer and he's basically the one solving these mysteries. And this one says, it is 1540 and the hottest summer of the 16th century. Matthew Shardlake, believing himself out of favor with Thomas Cromwell, is busy trying to maintain his legal practice and keep a low profile. But his involvement with a murder case, defending a girl accused of brutally murdering her young cousin, brings him once again into contact with the king's chief minister and a new assignment. The secret of Greek fire, the legendary substance with which the Byzantines destroyed the Arab navies, has been lost for centuries. Now, an official of the Court of Augmentations has discovered the formula in the library of a dissolved London monastery. When Shardlake is sent to recover it, he finds the official and his alchemist brother brutally murdered, and the formula has disappeared. 
Now, Shardlake must follow the trail of Greek fire across Tudor London while trying at the same time to prove his young client's innocence. But very soon, he discovers nothing is as it seems. I'm very, very excited for this book. A little nervous. It's quite chunky, but I've heard each book gets better and better through the series and very, very much looking forward to it. This next book is one that I've heard quite a few people on Goodreads and on BookTube talk about, and I have heard nothing but praise for it. It sounds really, really cute. When I ordered it, I didn't realize how short it is, and that is The Unselected Journals of Emma M. Lyon, Volume 1 by Beth Brower. And like I said, it's very, very short. It's basically novella length. I don't even know if it's, no, it's 100 pages. That's all that it is. The entire book is also told in journal entries, which I think is awesome. I love books like this. I love epistolary novels. But this one says, the year is 1883 and Emma M. Lyon has returned to her London neighborhood of St. Crispian's. But Emma's plans for a charmed and studious life are sabotaged by her eccentric cousin Archibald, her formidable aunt Eugenia, and the slightly odd denizens of St. Crispian's. Emma M. Lyon offers up her unselected journals, however self-incriminating they may be, which comprise a series of novella-length volumes. Armed with wit and a sideways amusement, Emma documents the curious realities of her life at Lapis Lazuli House. I think that sounds so, so fun. And like I was saying, everyone who I know has read this book has given it five stars. They've said it's so funny, so, so charming, and just such a good time. And I cannot wait to read it. I think this is a perfect spring read as well. So hopefully I will get to this very, very soon. So these last six novels are all by the same author who is quickly becoming one of my favorite authors. And I am talking about Georgette Hare. I'm just loving my time reading her books. I haven't read very many, but each book that I read by her is such a hit. Even if it's not a five-star book, I still enjoy her books so, so much. So first up we have Death in the Stocks and Behold, Here's Poison. So it's book one and two in a series. And I forget the name of the series. I know it's Inspector something and something. <laughs> yeah, I can't find the name of the series, but either way, I'll just share it on the screen. But I love these covers. They're so vintage. They're just so, so beautiful. And I believe every book in this series comes in this edition as well. So if I love the first two books, I'll definitely be collecting the entire series. Even if I don't absolutely adore them, I want to collect her books. I love her writing so, so much. I'll quickly read the summaries as they are quite short. So for Death in the Stocks, it says, In the dead of night, a man in evening dress is found murdered, locked in the stocks on the village green. Unfortunately for Superintendent Hannaside, the deceased is Andrew Vereker, a man hated by nearly everyone, especially his odd and unhelpful family members. The Verikers are as eccentric as they are corrupt, and it will take all Hannaside's skill at detection to determine who is telling the truth and who is pointing him in the wrong direction. The question is, who in this family is clever enough to get away with murder? And then for Behold, Here's Poison, it says, It's no ordinary morning at the Poplars. The master is found dead in his bed, and it seems his high blood pressure was not the cause. When an autopsy reveals a sinister poison in his body, it's up to the quietly resourceful Superintendent Hannaside to catch the murderer in time to spare the next victim. But every single member of the quarrelsome Matthews family has a motive, and none, of course, has an alibi. And then I also got Snowdrift and Other Stories, which I believe has about 14 short stories. There's really no summary to read, but I am not the biggest short story person, but I've heard such great things about this collection in particular, and her writing is wonderful. So even if I don't adore the stories, I know I will enjoy her writing. And I also got this on Thrift Books, and it's basically in perfect condition. It looks like it's brand new, even though it wasn't very, very happy about that. The next two I also got on thrift books. So first up we have The Spanish Bride and I love these old covers of her books. They're just so fun. And this one says, shot proof, fever proof, and a veteran campaigner at the age of 25, Brigade Major Harry Smith is reputed to be the luckiest man in Lord Wellington's army. But at the siege of Badajoz, his friends foretell the ruin of his career. For when Harry meets the defenseless Juana, a fiery passion consumes him. Under the banner of honor and with the self-same ardor he so frequently displays in battle, he dives headlong into marriage. In his beautiful bride, he finds a kindred spirit and a temper to match. But for Juana, a long year of war must follow. Sounds very quirky, like a lot of her books are. And then we also have These Old Shades. And this one says, Justin Allister, the Duke of Avon, is a reprehensible rake with an axe to grind. Decades ago, the... I'm going to put it here because I can't pronounce anything in French did something unforgivable and ever since Justin has been lying in wait to settle the score. When Justin meets Leon, a street urchin with a striking resemblance to his nemesis, he aims to use him as a pawn in his plans for revenge on the count. We'll just call him a count. Except Leon is in fact Leonie, a beautiful young 
another French word, who might just steal Justin's heart. Can Leonie win the Duke's affection or will his need for revenge overcome them both? I am sure it is as fabulously witty as Stephen Fry says it is, but I'm very, very excited. And this very last book for this haul is Devil's Cub by Georgette Hare. I am obsessed with this collection. I do have another one in this collection that is Arabella and I still have to read this one, but they are just absolutely beautiful. Love them so much. I actually think these two books are part of a series. It looks like two different characters have the same last name, which is interesting, so I'll have to look into that. But this one says, the Marquis of Vidal always gets his own way until he meets Mary Challoner. Mary Challoner is in big trouble now. She tried to trick fiery Dominic Allister, Marquis of Vidal, to prevent him from running off with her sister. Now he's discovered her subterfuge and he's not one to take this kind of thing lightly. But Mary has a few more shocking tricks up her sleeve and Dominic, nicknamed Devil's Cub, may just have met his match. I am definitely expecting a very fun time with this book. I'm very excited. Alrighty, so these are the books I've acquired in the last couple of months and I'm very, very excited to read all of them. I just love books. I love buying books. I always will love buying books and having a lot of unread books on my shelves because it just feels like a true library when you have so many books to choose from. I love it. Yes, sometimes it's overwhelming, but at the end of the day, it brings me joy and I honestly believe that's what matters. But anyways, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for joining me on a not so successful book shopping spree because I only bought three books, but over the last few months, I've acquired more, even if they were bought online. But anyways, thank you so, so much for watching this video. Please let me know if you've read any of these books. I would love to know what your thoughts were. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.